This is a handy resource for the uh, Raptor Watcher. It's a timetable for uh, migration for the area of Hawk Mountain, which is in Pennsylvania. And you can probably find these for your area, you just have to look for them. So if you were looking for a particular species of bird in numbers, this is uh, puts the odds on your side. Sharpshins, looks like mid-October is going to be a great time to see a lot of sharpshins. Um, pretty clear that in mid-September your odds go up to see uh, broadwing hawks. Right? You're going to see some before that, you're going to see some after that, but it looks like mid-September is a hot, uh, is rush hour. Here we have falcons, right? You, know, you want to see kestrels? Looks like uh, September is a big bunch. Some in October, but merlins are going to be more prevalent in October. And so on down the line. So uh, I would, it's certainly a good resource to have. And you can find one of these for spring migration also. Let's just take a look at spring while I'm at it. So spring, here we have uh, March, April, May, and June. Black vultures, osprey, golden eagles, right down the line. So this will help you uh, know when to get out your binoculars and go look for that species you want to see. It's hard to believe this is Montclair, New Jersey. You go through a regular bedroom community up here on the way in, but in here, there's this cliff. As you're walking down the street, you'll find this little cutoff. And it's uh, marked. This trail from the road leads you back to a secret set of stairs that go up a cliff. And that'll lead you to more stairs as you go up here. And there's a gate here that's open. Montclair Hawk Lookout, open for hawk watching from September to November, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., New Jersey Audubon. You have to wonder who created this. That leads yet to another flight of stairs. This hawk watch is uh, the top of a uh, mountain in Montclair, and it's um, got a great view, and it's within viewing distance of New York City. Correct. That's our falcon. It's a merlin. So merlin versus kestrel. My name is Liam Hart. I'm uh, here on behalf of Cape May Bird Observ Observatory oh. in New Jersey Audubon, and okay. uh, like you said, it's from the beginning of September. Till the end of November. We're doing a daily count. I'm here about six days a week. Alex covers for me over there on my days off. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, oh, you're yeah. a team, yeah. Yeah, we're a team here. All Everybody who comes up is kind of a part of the team spotting birds. The main birds that we're getting this time of year in the middle of September are broadwing talks. Mm -hmm. Yesterday we had uh, over 700 broadwing talks. Wow. Um, Today is a little quieter, yep. but it's not over. We just had a few broadwings go by and okay. a couple merlin, which is a small falcon. Uh huh. And uh, it's still early in the season, so we're gonna be here till the end of November and the numbers are gonna probably go down, but we'll get more species. Yeah. And we're gonna try and you know collect as much good data as we can so we can uh, have records of the trends up and down for different species that are mm -hmm. either thriving or in decline. Um, and you know it's, it's so these are submitted to various organizations, right? Hawkwatch.org, hawkcount.org, hawkcount.org, Hawk the Cape May Observatory. Yep, Cape May Bird Observatory. Okay. If you uh, are, if you're interested in watching hawks, which is a great hobby, I suggest going to hawkcount.org, and you can actually find lots of local hawk watches pretty much wherever you are. Yeah. Um, okay. So if you're in if you're in North Jersey, come to Montclair Hawk Watch and check it out. Yeah. And if you're in South Jersey, go to Cape May. Uh, Who knew New Jersey was such a birding hotspot, right? It's, One it's, of the five best in the country, if it, not the best. It is, yeah. Cape May, in my opinion, is the best place to see birds in the country. Yeah, we're in the Atlantic Flyway here, so we've got lots of good migration coming through this time of year. And then, you know, in the spring, you know, from, from March to uh, March 15th to May 15th, they actually do a spring hawk watch across the way. Uh-huh. Um, and... The other cliff. Yeah, the other cliff. Oh, they're coming can, north that way, huh? Yeah, you can see the bench over there. That's yeah. That's where they count in the spring. Okay. 
and uh, but here we're we're facing north, so we're getting the migrants coming south. Yep. And good view. Yeah, great yeah, we got a great view. You can see New York City over there, which is yeah. pretty unique. Not really no <laughs> yeah, other no, no other hawk watches have that. Yep. On a day like today, where winds are out of the east northeast, mm -hmm. a lot of broadwing hawks are going to be pushed a little bit west of us. Uh -huh. So if you happen to be, you know, 100 miles or a couple hundred miles west of us, yeah, today could be your lucky day. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yesterday we had the first northwest winds of the the season, really. So they're blowing southeast. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that starts pushing them. Yeah, and keep in mind. Broadwings are migrating all the way to South America, so they need to go southwest regardless because they want to go through Mexico. They don't yeah. want to go over water, so they have a southwest migration pattern anyways, and east winds are just going to help them go west. So yeah. okay. when we get winds from the west, yeah, that's when we can They're really, blown off course. Yeah, that's when we can do well. Um, now they're also riding the mountain ranges, right? What mountain range is this? Is this uh, the, this the Kittatinny? Kittatinny, yes. Kittatinny Range? Yeah, so we're on one of the uh, first ridges here. If you look over to New York, there's really no high ground between us and, and the city. So we're kind of the first, you know, the most eastern part of this ridge line. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes this kind of a, a good spot apart from the great view yeah um, to to get a glimpse of these birds that are trying to save some energy and catch some lift off of these ridges so they're getting an updraft off the ridge right you'll yep. see them circling in that updraft like a conveyor belt it's quite either, amazing either circling in that updraft or just getting launched off of a tailwind with a little lift behind them uh-huh like some falcons and, and exhibitors do uh, and so they can either circle up really high and then use gravity and coast down southwest or they can use a tailwind uh -huh. uh, and and just zip by really quick. Cool. Now they seem to, you know, they seem to pick out a target to zip to. I wonder if they're seeing another ridge from that altitude or something else they want to head towards, because they seem to be pretty purposeful in their uh, in their patterns. You know, it's I don't know how they detect these thermals, but they seem to have an idea of what's going on. Yeah, it's kind of that's something that you know I, I don't know how well we can fully understand that pattern. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously they do, the, the kettles when they group together is a pretty clear indication that, that they have a purpose and then that they're kind of, there's some sort of almost group think, but they're really what yeah. they're doing is finding hot spots yeah. that ultimately save them energy. So Maybe they, like a vulture, they might smell, who knows what they're doing. There. Right, I mean, they, yeah. they're, they're you know, ultimately just trying to conserve as much energy as they can. That's why they sure. ride the thermals and the ridges. Right. They, they, I mean, they try to conserve as much energy as possible because mm -hmm. they're covering insane amounts of ground. I mean, they're going mm -hmm. to South America, so yeah. they they don't want to be flapping the whole way. Sure. Certain birds are better at flapping, you know, powered migration like a peregrine falcon can just... The peregrines are muscling their way down. Peregrines huh? can muscle their way through They'll pretty much They'll fly in the rain, too, they'll right? They'll fly in the rain, they'll fly into a headwind. They don't, you know, nothing can phase them. Broadwings don't fly in the rain. Broadwings are much more picky, yeah. They're... I'm thinking they get weighed down by the rain and their feathers and they can't uh, soar as effectively or something. They'll lay over for a few days. And yep. That's what we're hoping for. They've been, lay, they've been pinned down for several days now with rain, so we're hoping that they'll just cut loose and come through here that's, soon. That's the hope, yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're hoping. But, yep, uh, fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, and a beginning bird watcher, what do they need? If somebody wants to partake in this i would suggest you know finding a pair of binoculars mm -hmm. um either borrowing some or, or getting you know mm -hmm. you know spending whatever you're comfortable spending come just you know hang out with some other birders it's great to get to a hawk watch because you get to pick other people's brains who have been doing it for uh, a while. Yeah, I was watching this gentleman over here. He was talking about the difference between a Merlin and a Kestrel. Yeah. It's pretty subtle. You know, you got to... Yeah, there's definitely some subtleties that you want to Especially pick at up. a half mile distance. Yeah, so <laughs> it, it helps to have been doing it a long time. And uh, there's always more to learn. You know, none of us are perfect and we all want, yeah. we all want to get better. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Take care. And if people want to uh, learn more... Should they go to the Cape May Observatory? Uh... Yeah, you can You know, Google Cape May Bird Observatory. New Jersey Audubon is the main website that mm -hmm. is probably the most robust resource. Um, but again, hawkcount.org is a really good spot. Yeah, so hawkcount.org, you just put in your area. It'll tell you what's out there, and yeah, you, can you can check the counts. You can search by state, and all the numbers at the end of the day get put in mm -hmm. everywhere. So you can see where the birds are flying and where, yeah. where they're not. Yeah. Has anybody, are you aware of anybody that, like, tracked? In other words, like, you know, Mount Peter's north of here, um, Quaker Ridge is in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Is anybody tracking their pattern, or is it pretty much independence uh, counts right now? Uh, well, we sort of make 
in effort on an individual basis, I do at least, to mm -hmm. sort of see where birds are and are not flying. Yeah. Um, because you can kind of get a read for where they might have a good day, if mm -hmm. we're going to have a good day. Yeah. Um, because when you have, you know, a big map of different hawk watches all over and you see all their numbers and you can sort of look at get that and on, the yeah. weather forecast and see where the winds might be pushing things. Yeah. You can sort of read some tea leaves, but you're never, you know, it's, it's never perfect. You're always yeah. guessing. Well, again, thank you very much. Absolutely, my yeah. pleasure. Okay. Wings are also farther up the body, so like a pigeon, yeah. the wings are kind of positioned more central. This is the Raccoon Ridge hawk count. Jack McCormick, one of the counters at Raccoon Ridge. Mid-September is the height of the broadwing migration. Barb shin out front. Okay. And if you're here at the right time and the weather conditions are right, you can literally see thousands. Like this past Sunday, we had 4,600. So they, mm -hmm. they prefer thermals, but when there are no thermals, they'll use whatever wind is available along the ridges. Mid-September is the time they got to go. They're going to be in Corpus Christi by the second week of December, uh, October. And down in uh, South America, look at that. Wow. Day after a big storm, uh, you never know with the weather what may have happened with the wind conditions. It may have taken the birds away from the ridges and pushed them further east because mm -hmm. the winds were coming from one direction today. Yesterday, with all or previously during the week, we had easterly winds, mm -hmm. which brings them into the ridge. Uh huh. It's, it's, it's a luck. It's sometimes you're in the right place, sometimes you're not. Yeah. There are days when we have hardly any broadwings here, and you can go 20 miles to the southeast of us by Merrill Creek, and they'll have 10,000. Yeah. You just don't know. They can yeah. be south of us and passing over Militia Hill now with 10,000 outside of Philly. Yeah. 4,600 on Saturday and up close to another 1,000 on Sunday. That's a nice count. Wow. That's awesome. How do you count those? <laughs> Very carefully. That is great. Okay, and you get a, especially when they break up, they stream out of that kettle. We yeah. That's the, e that's the easiest. Yeah, they right now, not so easy. I'm Brian Butler. I, I assist the counters here on Raccoon Ridge. Bummer actually breed down in here in the, in the trees down below right here, but most of these are coming from way up north in Canada. It's an elusive bird, right? It's a forest bird that we yes, don't normally see. Yeah, I've, I've hardly ever seen them besides migration. We're heading down towards, uh, I think Jack said, they'll, they certainly most of all these will go past Corpus Christi, mm -hmm. uh, Veracruz, Mexico, which I w was down there about five How many did you see there in a day? It, for there, it was actually considered just an okay day, and we saw over 50,000 hawks. Wow. Day, one day. Wow. Kettles of three, four, five hundred at a time coming through. Wow. It was remarkable. High or low? or? Uh, mostly high. Mm -hmm. Mostly high, which is a typical Broadway tactic. They love the thermals. Uh, to see them low like we did on this past Saturday is a real treat. How many did you see this past Saturday? Over 4,500. Wow. Yeah. That's and great. this is not known as the greatest broadwing. We hit and miss and get thousands in a year, mm -hmm. but uh, we can easily miss them. They can be over. They just don't need this ridge. They yeah. need the hot therm the thermals, the hot air, the hot bubbles going up, and they and they key on each other. They're not all buddies or anything, but they're kind of keying on the behavior of the others. So they spot somebody exactly. riding a thermal. That's where you see them all graphs together mm -hmm. and kettle up. And then the easiest way to count them is when that um, thermal starts to dissipate and cool off because it's going so high. And then they break off and come more. In the conveyor belt, file. right? Exactly, yeah. Down in Veracruz, I saw that many times. And, and you'll have kettles of five, six, seven hundred. And when they break up, they call it the river rafters because <laughs> it looks like a streaming river. You know, my first impression would be that they would all flap their way down to Mexico. They don't right, want to. They right? don't want to flap. Quite the opposite. Flying is incredibly energy expensive. So they're they're doing the wind. They're riding exactly. the, the air. They know how to ride the air, exactly. and they spend very little energy. So we're seeing monarchs come through here too. True. Same and thing, right? They're going down to Mexico also, down to the. And I actually about six seven years I was down to the migration site where the monarchs all go to. Mm -hmm. And that was. 
off the chart crazy. But New Jersey is one of the best states for birding. It truly is. It <laughs> truly is. Uh, it has more species have been seen here than any other states except, and think of the size of these states, Alaska, uh -huh. California, Texas, and Florida. Well, the, only places, yeah. the only places you can see more species of birds than New Jersey. That's because we have more bird watchers. Well, no, no, it's not that. <laughs> it's not that at all. It's that we have, a, in a, such a small state, we have a great variety of habitat. Mm -hmm. We got the shore, we got the eastern mountains, we have a lot of farmland yet, and forest, and... And, uh, and, and we have that secret weapon, Cape May. Yeah. Which and, is, uh, um, it's also the northern range of a lot of southern birds and the southern range of a lot of northern birds mm -hmm. that just kind of overlap mm -hmm. right there. So that's why they get a lot, yeah. of, a lot of species. Yeah. And it's a really beautiful day, enjoying the birds. Great view up here. Yeah. Especially later on when. You get more colors. Ajit, Anthony, we're in Mount Peter Hawk Watch. Okay. In between Warwick and uh, Greenwood Lake of uh, Route 17A. In New York, right? Yep. And uh, this is the, uh, I've heard this is the oldest uh, volunteer hawk watch. In, in the country. In the country, right? Right. Oh, there's a bird here. It's a sharp fin hawk in the blue, no landmarks. Okay. Let me put that down. Option. Okay, that's the fourth for the hour. How many broad wings today? Uh, we had the last hour we had 96, uh, 75 the hour before, mm -hmm. 18, 18, and 8, and four for this hour. Okay, great. So Good. We had 900 plus about three days ago, one day. Uh huh. And how long will this run until? This goes on till the uh, middle of. November at this watch, but there are other watches like Franklin Mountain and Oneonta which go on till December 31st, same with the Hawk Mountain in Pennsylvania. And the Broadwings, uh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Go, go ahead. The Broadwings, uh, how long will they be coming through for? You know, Mainly the... this week. Yeah. And maybe in next week in smaller numbers. So today, September 19th. Yeah, they tend to go together, fly yeah. together. The only gregarious hawks but only during migration, otherwise they don't congregate. So normally solitary, but yep. for this event, I'd yep. like to know how they know how to get together. Uh, no idea. Big, big day. No? It can happen anytime this week. Yeah. Um, generally after the passage of a cold front, like mm -hmm. yesterday, with rain, we expected more birds today, but we, have, we expected maybe a thousand today, but you know, there are too many variables and the variables we know aren't the ones the birds know. Because if you're anyway. lucky, you're in the right place at the right time right. and you get, you know, several thousand coming through. Well, the, that's the advantage of doing things for decades. You have to hit one good day once. <laughs> yes. I no hit, beginner's I, luck. Yeah, I hit a good day about five years ago. We had about 4,000 plus in one day. And nice. lots of helpers and that helps. Yeah. Linda? Okay. 17,000. Hook Mountain. Hook Mountain, that's in uh, on the New Hudson York. River. Was that in not at Nyack? Uh, Nyack. It was unbelievable. And it's easy to count the hawks on Hook because they're either streaming one by one or 10 yeah. by 10 or 20 by 20 across the river because they lose altitude. And they hit our mountainside and go up. And pretty soon up and down that whole river, we had different kettles going and different people counting each other. And I think they were maybe 200, 300 or something like that. In one group? Uh, in in the two or three, hour. in the couple of hours I, I was there, okay. yeah, yeah. And that's Hook Mountain. Hook Mountain. On the Hudson. So I, I, was, I came from uh, Raccoon Ridge. I came up here. Where's Raccoon Ridge? Uh, that's out near Blairstown. Okay. Yeah, what's the total for today? Uh, 478. 478. Total? Yep. Okay. And we have 16 osprey, two adults, um, I mean two eagles, one adult and one juvenile, uh, immature. Bald eagles. Yes, bald eagles, sorry. That's okay. Uh, 47 sharpshins hawks, two Cooper's hawks, 401 broad wings, mm -hmm. seven kestrels, three peregrines, which mm -hmm. is great. Yep. Um, so, 
We have a total of 478, which is decent. Not good great. job. Yeah, good job. You brought them all in. Very I good. I would have expected a thousand today at least. Oh well. It was not to be. Well, there's tomorrow. Yep. You have to move out here. My phone went dead. I'm supposed to have one delivered today. This is a uh, male peregrine falcon. I know, it was a couple years ago, they had one in the Pacific River. Yeah, yeah. Fastest creature on Earth. Yeah, yeah. Can dive at speeds up to 250 miles an hour. The uh, intake vents of some jets, fighter jets, are fashioned after, or copied, of the, uh, the, na the noses of, uh, of peregrine falcons. And here's his wife, the female, or his mate. Very nice. So you can see these at the uh, Alpine State Line Hawk Watch. And uh, all the hawk counters are here today. And this overlooks the Hudson River in Alpine, New Jersey. The Alpine Lookout, uh, about 20 miles north of New York City. And uh, 10. 10 miles north of New York City, and we have a beautiful view of the Hudson River. I'm Gil Hawkins. Okay. Uh, assemble here every day during the migrating season, usually from the beginning of September to uh, the second week in November. Okay. We count migrating raptors. We get falcons, we get eagles, we get um, precipiters, we get hawks. So exciting, right? These yeah. are exciting birds. <laughs> they are very exciting birds, depending on where you are somewhere around the 16th of September when the broad wings flock together and migrate south. How do they know how to do that, you know? Is it just that uh, they... Well, that's probably nature's best kept secret. <laughs> like yesterday. Yeah. Detroit. Yeah. There's a hawk watch in Detroit. Yeah. 22,000 birds came through there yesterday. 22,000 broad wings. Broad wings, wow. So Montclair had like, Montclair hawk watch just a couple ridges over had 700. I don't know what yeah. they really had. Chris Takis. I'm a birder, Bergen County Audubon Society. Pretty much I go out every day, but most of my most of what I do is usually down in the Meadowlands because that's close to home. I need to come here really early and just see what's kind of happening. It pretty much it's a luck thing. It, it's, you know, wind patterns farther north affect what's going to happen down here, weather here. You don't know. The birds are essentially all making their way to Mexico, so yeah, they come through here and then start heading west. But if they head west before... yeah. Like that, you got a group through Detroit. Mm -hmm. you know, Wind's heading a little west. You completely miss everything. You get nothing here. <laughs> we can miss a lot of stuff. If we have too much of an easterly push, yeah, the birds stay to the west. Rain, they won't fly in the rain. They think they just kind of hunker down and, and yeah. wait it out. And but they'll fly right at. They'll start flying right after the storm. Yeah, and it's you know kind of a solitary bird that we don't normally see, uh, broadwing. I don't see them very often. They're a forest bird, fly through the woods. They're here in numbers, but we don't see them. But yet they all come out and they all get together and tolerate each other for this uh, group effort to migrate, right? Right, and, they, and it's they're, they're not the only one that migrates in groups like this. Mm -hmm. You get, uh, I think, uh, you know, some of the kites yeah. do that as well. Mississippi kites out going through out west and stuff. They do that. Mm -hmm. Swallowtail kites. They all group up down in Florida and hang together, and mm -hmm. they all move out together. You'll get a group of a kettle, which is a group of birds working together in this uh, in this updraft, spiraling. And you look in there, and you start to see other birds. You know, you see red tails and other yep. things. You know, they're all sharing that information as they go. And, and, and a lot of times we don't know where these updrafts are going to come from, but big parking lots of corporate parks provide on a sunny day. <laughs> The, hot, the blacktop. <laughs> if the birds are moving down through the yeah. Meadowlands area, Giant Stadium, that part of the big parking lot that they heats up, provides a lift, the birds go up. Do you think they detect it and they know it? No idea. No idea, they okay. I, yeah. I, I, and I'm sure maybe as they're flying, they can, they can feel. Yeah, they smell. Can, they, yeah. They can feel the updrafts. It's the same thing over here. They can feel the updrafts yeah. coming off of these cliffs, which is one of the reasons why the cliffs over here is this is so good. Yeah. And how many miles a day do you think they can make? That I don't know. Yeah. Okay. One of Pete Dunn's books talked about red tail, said they could do 220 miles in a day, or they've been recorded at that. Maybe they can do more, but uh, quite interesting. So these guys are all heading down to Central America, South America? Go down to Central America through Mexico. Through Mexico. Veracruz, okay. Mexico is a major 
passing spot there. I guess it's a narrow gap. funnel. Yeah, yeah. Funnel, yeah. And they get Gets them all in. Hundreds of thousands of birds. Through there. Okay, so when does this broadwing migration pretty much wrap up for the most part? Uh, probably, probably by the week, first week of October. First week of October, but we're in the hot spot right now. This is, the, this is, this is when the stuff is moving. You know, Rush hour. The stuff is moving, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 16, but the, 17, 18, 19, 20, that's mm -hmm. usually the best times. This is the major flyway. Yeah. Birds north and south right through here. Yeah, we have Cape May, which is, you know, which yeah. is just, you know, the, the but, spot. But, but, you know, it's just... The mountain ridges, the birds yep. fly north and south along the mountain ridges. Yeah. They fly north and south along the rivers. We got you know the Hackensack, the Hudson through here. Mm-hmm. They fly up and down through that. The Ramapo Mountains, the uh, right. Appalachians, the Kittatinny. Go out to the Kittatinnies, the uh, the Wachungs in central central Jersey and Wachungs like going up to Garrett Mountain. Some of the hawk watches have live feeds as they're they're entering their number and they're done oh really who would that be Montclair Hawk Watch does that oh really Hawk Watch does that. oh so they have live feeds so by the hour you get to see what's coming through yeah yeah it's kind of nice to follow but you could you can look on on, on hawk count, count dot hawk count dot org and see as much as you want great the next day this is Kevin Watson and you did the photography for the book Hawk Mountain the world's first raptor sanctuary, and um, I'm sometimes a counter here at State Line Lookout. I think the State Line, anytime you've got a good chance of seeing bald eagles, peregrine falcons. I'm looking at one over the top of your head right now. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of other hawks, um, <laughs> sharp shin hawks, Cooper's hawks. Red shouldered hawks, kestrels, merlins. And on any given day, you will, ideally you want a windy day with a little breeze. Rainy day is very bad. Mm -hmm. You probably won't, won't see any hawks if you come out on a rainy day. Yeah. Um, there's a lot more to it than broad wings. Mm -hmm. And when you get those cold, windy days in October, you can get some spectacular hawk flights with birds coming in close. Mm -hmm. And you get um, up close looks at raptors. So you're a photographer. I mean, here's your one of your some of your rig, right? That's and uh, this is a, a pretty good place to exercise all that gear, right? It can be. It's very popular. A lot of, mm -hmm. lot of people here with tripods and big, big lenses on the weekends. <laughs> uh, Where else could you be almost assured to get a peregrine? He's sitting up at a tree over there. I mean, well, that okay. is the tree that the peregrines like. Yeah. And if the peregrines come back, they are going to evict those vultures um, pretty quickly. They like it here because you've got this big open river mm -hmm. and birds that have to cross the river on migration are sitting ducks as we might say. <laughs> they've got bird to hide there. and the peregrines are, they could, they've got fantastic eyesight. They can see a bird that's over in Westchester County, mm -hmm. the other side of the river. Yeah. And, um, take flight, go up high, zoom, they can drop in a in a dive at uh, I think almost 200 miles an hour yeah and um, kill death on impact if and so, you could see so. all that play out right here you right can watch that happen day after day if you come to state line look at but what else do you see here well you see lots of bulges uh -huh. lots of photographers yeah lots of photographers they're great it's um, good photographer counting here this yeah. is a pretty good place for bald eagles uh-huh um, there are nests up and down the Hudson, and you often see them cruising up and down fishing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great place to see ospreys. Um, you'll often see them going by with fish. Uh, it's also a good place to watch ravens, and ravens are not technically raptors, but they're um, very intelligent birds that used to be very difficult to see in New Jersey. You have to go way up north and now they're expanding that range. Mm -hmm. um, when it's windy and they're out, uh, you can watch them. They're flying for the sheer, jo sheer joy of flying. They just are having fun. They do barrel roll stunts. They're flying upside down. They're doing tricks. It's, um, uh -huh. it's a lot of fun. 
gentleman's saying there's a red shoulder on here. You have to do your oh, I work. Think we ought to stop doing this and look at the red shoulder. <laughs> Definitely. It is, I think, a red shoulder. Red shoulder. Okay. Turns around. Great. Wow, you got to hear sound. That's the uh, red shoulder. That's the red shoulder that was wow, just, just flew over. Beautiful. If people want to see more of your photography, where do they go? KevinWatsonPhoto.com. I'm here at the Blue Rocks Campground in Pennsylvania, six miles away from Hawk Mountain. And the, uh, the trailer has uh, worked out well as my home base and my, uh, my camp here. Uh, got all the amenities and uh, the right location. It's the uh, Hawk Mountain gift shop. Hawk Mountain, world's first rapture sanctuary by text by Jim Wright, and photography by Kevin Watson. The author of the book, Hawk Mountain. Which, Hawk Mountain. Which I did for their 75th anniversary, and uh, it was a total delight to tell the story of how Hawk Mountain came about. Uh huh. Uh, it was originally uh, a place in the early 1900s where gunners used to go up on the mountain for target practice during migration season to shoot hawks out of the sky oh my god and leave them for dead oh. and the, the valley was littered with these dead dead hawks and uh, a guy named Richard Poe wrote about the carnage at Hawk Mountain he was a Audubon guy and uh, Rosalie Edge was a wealthy uh, New Yorker who read about this and said it has to stop Mm -hmm. And she tried to get Audubon to stop it. They were reluctant for whatever reason, so she went out and bought the mountain. Nice. And said, from now on, no more gunning of raptors here. Well, the hunters who have been doing this for years, local coal miners, uh, they really enjoyed their gunning on weekends. So uh, they decided to persist. And so Rosalie Edge hired Maurice Brune as her first uh, curator of Hawk Mountain, first uh, wildlife warden, and uh, his first day on the job, there was a dead hawk over mounted on the bridge on the entrance to Hawk Mountain to give him a, a message they weren't going to go easily. Mm. But he persisted, got police, uh, enforced all the rules, and eventually Hawk Mountain came to be a sanctuary instead of a place where hawks were gunned down. And it became the first hawk watch in the world. Uh, where you go keep counts and uh, keep track every year of how many birds flew by so you had some gauge of the population of migrating raptors. And since then, hawk watching has just continued to take off and we're really honored to have the second oldest hawk watch uh, in the United States and probably the world at Montclair and the third longest uh, running hawk watch and the longest running volunteer hawk watch in the world at Mount Peter, just over the border in New York State. And that was founded by Alan Dale's own Styles Thomas. Uh, Hawk Mountain, PA. Uh, my name is David Barber. I'm a research biologist and an official counter. So this, the Kittatinny Ridge is a leading line for raptor migration. Um, in the past week, we've had over 4,500 raptors go through, mostly broad wings. Uh -huh. They're taking advantage of the deflective winds off the ridge as well as the thermals. Mm -hmm. So we've been seeing sharp shinned hawks, kestrels, osprey, turkey vultures, mostly broad wings. Uh -huh. but the broad wings will basically be through after a couple more days. Yeah, we're at the end of it and we're hoping, uh, I've been holding out to come here. I live in New Jersey, holding out for a good day. And I'm, I'm pretty sure you said you guaranteed today was gonna be a good day. I appreciate it's, that. It's <laughs> gonna be a great day. So not okay. necessarily, you may not see a lot of broad wings, but you'll see lots of other stuff. They're primarily using thermals to migrate. Yeah. If you think about it, they're going down yep, into yep, yep, Central yep, and yep, South yep, America yep, yep, and they want to minimize the amount of energy that they're using. Yeah. They, they ride up in thermals usually and then stream out the top to find another thermal. Yeah. Smelt student and just keep going. And they're normally solitary, right? In the forest, we don't see them. 
in during the, the forest, year. Yes, but during migration, they migrate through in flocks. Yeah, they so understand. We can, we can see kettles of hundreds of birds yeah. at a time. Sometimes we see other species riding around in the kettle, sharp shinned hawks, ospreys. Yeah. Sort of now, my theory is they won't fly in the rain because they're weighted down too much by water. That is correct, yeah. All right. They, okay. they do, when you get into the tropics, the thermals are so strong. Um, that it's still advantageous to fly in the rain. Okay. We'll do that. Okay, good. And uh, this place has been here for a while, right? Uh, Since 1934, we've been counting hawks. Yeah. And before that, uh, there was... Before uh, that, it was they were shooting hawks here. That's so. right. And uh, somebody purchased it because they were so sick of seeing that, it right? It was Rosalie Edge who put the money together to purchase the first 1,400 acres of Hawk Mountain Sanctuary. She was disgusted by the uh, carnage. And uh, she said, well, thank goodness for her. I mean, uh, we probably were seeing the benefits of what she did today. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And how long have you been doing this? I've been on staff here for, it'll be 19 years. Oh, well, you're November. seasoned vet. You've seen yeah. it all. You've seen no <laughs> birds and you've seen a lot of birds. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so it's all kind of luck. I was up at uh, Raccoon Ridge in New Jersey. I was up at Mount Peter. I was up at Montclair Hawk Watch. Mixed results and all. And I, you know, it wouldn't be uh, a good Hawk Watch year if I didn't get a chance to come here. So uh, great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Osprey. Yeah. Scott, for that cattle over there, what did you count? 20 birds? I counted 20 off of there, but off of one now there's... And they were Broadwings, right? Doesn't look like anything. Oh, yeah, Broadwings. Oh, yeah. We got a large kettle of Broadwings coming over one. Oh, wow. We got more back here. Yeah, no, the Broadwings now are going by on the left here, high. So it might have been like we have not chosen to follow them with around here. So it might have been a vulture, but may have also gone By one still? Local one all the way back through one. Go ahead, it's too early. Okay. We have another large petal forming over the slope of one, a broad wing. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. the farthest to the right. That's the first There's 50, hill there. 60, to our right. Yeah. Okay. 70 birds out there. Oh my goodness, where? I don't see that. See where this the slope here turns into the valley? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the ridge. They're right over that area, but they're out a little bit. Yeah, you're gonna But it's so the photography's tough, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, uh, oh. the migrators are going to be very good. Good, miles, good. So, <laughs> you know, it makes sense for them to conserve energy as much as they can. It's actually a little bit less. Like yeah, I think it is too. 55 maybe? Yeah. 51 is the next gray one. Yeah. Okay. Add in another two broad wings. There's 11 now in this spot. Thanks. How many are you up to 11? Yep. yep. Yeah. Thanks. KJB 211, north the headquarters. Okay. Up for the last hour. Sharp Shin Hawk 8. Cooper's Hawk 1, Red Shore Hawk 1, Broadwing Hawk 159, Red Tail Hawk 1.
That was 71 right there.